no labels, which is committed, they say, to problem solving over partisanship. They gather twice a month for regular across the aisle meetings and will gather again tomorrow morning on Capitol Hill. Joining me right now are two of its members of no labels, Republican Congressman Reed Ribble of Wisconsin. And Democratic Congressman Kurt Schrader of Oregon, who will both be addressing their colleagues tomorrow. Well, Mr. Ribble, Congressman, you're from the state where the Republicans began in Ripon, so uh, let's talk about your thinking. Do you think health care should be in or out of a debt ceiling deal? In or out? Oh, I, I, I think right now the health care issue has kind of been settled at this point. My personal take on this is if the health care law is, is not going to function correctly, let's let it stand or fall on its own, and, and then it will live or, or fail based on that. The American people will respond based on its success or failure. That's where I'm at. Mr. Schrader, same question. Should health care be in or out of any deal on the debt ceiling? I agree, it hit, I agree it hit the nail on the head. Uh, it's not part of the discussion anymore. I think we on leadership on both sides has moved on bigger fish to fry beyond even the CR beyond even the uh, debt ceiling it's how do we deal with our long-term debt and deficits and get this economy going again that's what you're going to see talk about this next week well there was an old argument about religion someone once said we don't know whether there's a heaven or a hell but don't take any chances I'm going to ask in the same regard I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm dead serious here I'm asking the same question about the debt ceiling cliff do you think that October 17th or a date nearby that is important that we don't pass in terms of uh, passing the, uh, uh, exceeding the debt ceiling, Mr. Ribble? I, I absolutely do. I think that's a very serious matter. To You cannot go beyond that debt limit. I mean, the, the, the country's revenue sources are going to drop down to about $2 billion, according to uh, Secretary Liu. At that point, their, their plain and simply will not be the cash flow with which to pay the bills. My personal contention is, uh, while you might say a structural default is only on interest, the reality is there are tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of uh, federal contracts out there with small and medium-sized businesses. If you don't pay those contracts, uh, you defaulted on that debt and yeah. we wouldn't have a 700 billion dollar deficit if there was adequate cash flow to pay the bills same question to you, mr schrader uh, about the deadline is it real october 17th jack lou says it is i think it's very real it's catastrophic i talked to folks on wall street talked to my banking community talked to folks around my state and they're very nervous about this. Uh, I don't think you mess around with the full faith and credit of the United States of America, the blow to our prestige, uh, the long-term damage uh, to our creditworthiness and uh, how the rest of the world views us. Yeah. I think that's irreparable. Well, now that you both passed the saliva test, I have to ask you about what your solutions are. Mr. Ribble, what are you going to suggest in terms of an exit strategy that gets us at least to Christmas and the holidays where we don't have something really economically horrible happening? Yeah, you know, Chris, I, I actually have met, uh, met with the speaker and I've had uh, good conversations with him. Uh, my own plan would be for us to actually what are the true drivers of our long-term fiscal condition, which would be entitlements. I think that there's relatively broad agreement on some of the reforms necessary to, to actually reform Social Security. And my encouragement to the speaker is that we look at that one, kind of very uh, completely drill right into it, and craft the policy and reforms necessary to, to uh, take that $9.6 or $10 trillion of unfunded obligation and secure and save Social Security for the next 75 years. It can be done. This is a perfect time to do it because we've got divided government and so one side will not be forcing a fix on the other side well let me ask uh, mr. Schrader that question would the Democrats be willing to go after entitlement reform something that secures uh, Social Security for a long-term uh, commitment if they don't get something in return because the president says I'll look at that but I want something in return he keeps suggesting something on revenue increasing somewhere and it doesn't seem like he's willing to sit down and just fix the entitlements if you will well, and I think I don't think uh, Congressman Reed or a lot of my colleagues on the other side of the aisle expect it to be uh, my way or the highway. Uh, that's the beauty of the rank and file discussions that are now going on. We're talking about listening to each other for a change. Uh, entitlement reform includes not only dealing with reforms at the system that was developed uh, before the baby boomers became a reality or a concern, uh, but the revenue sources also. Uh, were developed before the baby yeah. boomers became a reality concern. So I think we have to have revenue as part of this discussion. I think that's been thrown away or, or discounted in the past. Uh, the president's willing to talk. I think Republican leadership's willing to talk. Uh, it's just that the, the extremes of both ends are controlling the dialogue, and that's a problem. Great news, maybe great media, but not good for this country. Well, that's what I've been worrying about, too. Thank you so much. U.S. Congressman Reed Ribble, Wisconsin, and Congressman Kurt Schrader, Oregon. And we'll be 